All right, YouTube, remember the way the American public was fooled into largely supporting the Patriot Act, thinking it had something to do with patriotism and, and national values like liberty or civics or something like that right after 9-11? And the government said, be afraid of everything. Oh, people are trying to fuck with us. Give Uncle Sam more power. We'll solve your problems. Do you see any similarity between that and, the, and this uh, countering uh, counter, what is it called? Countering Disinformation and Propaganda Act that Obama quietly pushed through? Yeah. Uh, because it's not about countering disinformation and propaganda, it's about countering foreign media within the United States. Now, uh, has anyone considered? People like Obama often say, well, at least the rudiments of constitutional rights apply to, you know, illegal immigrants, or at least people who are in the process of, uh, of uh, immigrating to this nation or something. So you're saying that individuals would, but foreign entities run by foreign individuals doing business in the U.S., often with U.S. staff or you know U.S. citizens working on their behalf within the country. They don't actually have First Amendment rights. I would beg to differ. And uh, exactly what gives the government the power to delineate that the First Amendment is no longer in force because the, uh, the government deems something fake? And number three, if the evidence that they're using, like with the Russian hacking stuff, if the evidence that they use to determine whether something is fake or real, something is originating in a foreign manner through propaganda or, or domestically through you know, fake news or uh, is organic or something, uh, then how would they just, how would they actually deal with the legal system in such claims? If one of these groups, say it's a U.S. firm, uh, and they've reposted something that the government deems to be foreign propaganda, and they suffer some sort of repercussion for that. They they get a you know the government tells them to stop it. Uh, the government uh, has its allies at Farcebook you know shut down their page or something, and, and let's say they sue the government. They say, well, provide the evidence of this, but the evidence is all classified. How does the legal system proceed? This is a dead-in-the-water sort of bill. It's, it won't last. It will be struck down by the judicial system probably not that long from now if they do actually do anything substantial to put into full force. Uh, now, I will say one thing. I don't really have a problem with the government attempting to counter literal propaganda coming from foreign states or state media entities. And the reason I say that is I do not believe that they have freedom of the press. The Constitution applies within the United States and to people within the United States. It does not apply to RT. It doesn't apply to BBC. It doesn't apply to Al Jazeera. It doesn't apply to these things. Those are, those are under other nations' laws. It doesn't have anything to do with them. I would say this, though, and it's interesting. Here we see the same Obama that's comfortable with the world at large running the internet rather than having U.S. dominance over the internet. Suddenly proclaiming that as far as the internet goes, though, those foreign sites wouldn't have full access to the American audience. Now, I like to believe that the average American is not a total idiot and is capable of telling when something is fake versus something is real. And where are you drawing the line here about what disinformation is? Are, are we talking about a scenario in which the government is going to go after fairly obviously infotainment groups like Infowars or something like that? Or are we specifically talking just about foreign entities and just foreign entities that happen to be spawning literal state-manufactured propaganda? If the latter, that alone is fine, but remember what happens with these sorts of big government, big brother, idiot programs. It's just like the surveillance enabled under the Patriot Act. The original idea was we are conducting surveillance on foreign targets and on domestic individuals who happen to be in regular communication such that there's a reasonable suspicion that that person might be uh, talking to Osama or something like that. That was the original intent. It was to look at foreign targets. Now, foreign targets don't have the right to privacy under our laws. They're not under our constitution. And that's where, again, that's where I differ with some libertarians. Some are like, oh, world libertarianism now. Well, you can't compel foreign states to operate under the U.S. Constitution. I would think that that would be a violation of this non-aggression principle of yours. Some foreign group, they don't care about the U.S. Constitution. They may not even support many aspects of it.
Well, who are you to say that that that, that uh, protection automatically extends them, protects them from their own state that has the right by the consent of its citizenry? Screwy as though it may be in some cases, admittedly, you look at Saudi Arabia or Iran or something, certainly, or North Korea. Uh, what, what gives you the right to compel that foreign state cobbled together under the will of its own people with its own, perhaps, moral laws that people may even support over there uh, under a libertarian banner? Well, I don't think you have that right. Certainly under any international system, unless you intend to invade and liberate them, you certainly don't have that right. So get ready, to, I guess, to do some libertarian warmongering or something, I suppose. Um, but this act itself will be misused. Let's make no mistake. It will expand over time. What it's done is take the cyber command and elevate it to the same sort of combatant status uh, that routine military programs are involved in, which means weaponized hacking as well. This uh, legitimizes Obama's sort of weaponized hacking program that he's uh, apparently used several times against the Russians. Now, do I care if the U.S. government attacks the computer systems of foreign states? On its head, no. But... At the same time, yeah, I do care, specifically because you might provoke a response from a nation like Russia or China that fucks up our system so badly that it inconveniences we the people who use the internet to put our views out there. Honestly, it would be the greatest of worlds if no state was engaged in such propaganda, in cyber warfare, attempting to hack businesses, hack secured systems, you know, shill around and so forth. There are plenty of problems with homegrown shills online as well. People who are... CTR is a great example. What's the difference between Correct the Record, which runs armies of sock accounts and pays people to post total nonsense on Facebook or on YouTube? What's the difference between that and what Russia supposedly is doing? Now, number one, does it violate any international law? Not that I'm aware of. Not that I would care anyway, fuck the UN, all, the, all these world courts, UN, Interpol, all this stuff, it's crap. It doesn't work. It's not making anybody safer. They take a hands-off approach when they should take a hands-on approach, and they take a hands-on approach in situations that they make far worse. What's the point of these organizations? International law is crap. We shouldn't have any international regulatory system. It shouldn't exist. It should be purely advisory. And it should be premised on the idea of, well, let's try to get along and not constantly hit each other with our cocks. But that never happens. It's never going to happen. I don't care if the U.S. government creates propaganda, which is what this specifically is about. This isn't about countering foreign propaganda by dispelling false rumors. It's about creating U.S.-made propaganda and exporting it in retaliation. Now, is that objectively wrong under some situation? You no, know, maybe not, but you know what it's going to cause? You know what Obama fails to see because he's too dumb to see his hands in front of his face half the time? He doesn't seem to understand he's going to create a cyber arms race and a separate Cold War on an entirely new technological level. What happens if we do this and we perturb the Chinese too much or the Russians or something? And all of a sudden they decide to say, well, you know, we have the capability. We'll use a Stuxnet style system, shut down some electronic component that's hooked up to all of these different sort of uh, semi-centralized internet systems. We'll invade them all and we'll shut down their electrical grid for a good week. What do you think will happen to our economy? You'd have fires, gas lines would explode, power plants would probably get fucked up, you wouldn't be able to respond to emergencies, tens or hundreds of thousands of people would die, firefighters wouldn't be able to coordinate things, you'd have, you know, probably raging infernos in some of our cities, police wouldn't be able to respond to things, you'd have a crime wave, you'd probably have also, you'd have so many problems, the country would be in a, in a mental breakdown mode, people would be boarding up their windows and sitting in their attic with a shotgun in pure fear. That's what could happen if we engage in this kind of behavior. I would rather see the occasional hacking of U.S. systems than to empower the U.S. government to do the same thing only worse and end up with a literal cyber war situation in which we probably get fried. Nukes? Who needs nukes? You shut down the internet to the United States for a week, what do you think all those phone-obsessed teens are going to do? They're going to go nuts. Half of them will kill themselves. They can't function without a smartphone. Although, in, in, you know, if we had another, uh, what was it, that solar event that we had back in the 1800s that fried all the telegraphs and stuff, 
uh, I can't even remember what it was called. Some sort of a, uh, it was a, some sort of a major X flare. So I can't remember the name of it. The Carrington event, I believe, is the name of it. Uh, can you imagine if we had something like that right now? How miserable some of these people would be. You know, I can go out in the garden and be fine. Yeah, I'm internet addicted, but at the same time, not so heavily internet addicted that I take the internet with me. I don't use a smartphone. I don't even like carrying a cell phone. Uh, so I can go out in nature. Yeah, that's fine. I, I can go shovel snow for a few hours just because I'm bored. Uh, that's fine. A lot of people can't do that. And then there are people whose lives rely on the internet. My livelihood. I get donations through YouTube. I sell books through Amazon. I sell ebooks through KDP and so forth. That that's how I make my money. If the internet get if the internet gets fucked by Russia or China or something in retaliation for something that our government has done, do you really trust them? By the way, to not perturb some foreign state into doing so? I don't. I don't trust them for a moment. What do you think happens to my livelihood for that week or that month or whatever it happens to be? It's gone. I don't get any of that stuff. Hell, you be, you probably wouldn't either. You don't have to be uh, internet reliant. You won't get your check. You, you won't get, you, what if it happens around tax time? You're not getting your refund until everything's fixed. Hell, uh, half of these banks and so forth, they don't have paper backup. They don't even have a physical backup for some of this stuff. It would fry our economy completely. And you're saying that you wanna go poke the bear, poke the dragon, poke whatever nation to do this. I don't think so. I don't think it's a great idea. On its face, the fundamental principle of countering propaganda is fine, but it's not really about pr countering propaganda any more than the Patriot Act was about being patriotic. Any more than the Affordable Care Act was about things being affordable. Anytime you have a government program, a government bill, that has a title like this, you know that its intent is not the same as that family-friendly title. They give it the happy-go-lucky title of we're gonna we're just countering disinfo. We're just countering propaganda. We're trying to get people real news. We're trying to keep out like like the spy versus spy stuff. Okay, sounds really good, doesn't it? Family friendly, nice non-alarming title that shows you Uncle Sam's really working for you, trying to keep you safe. And then you delve into it and you find it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with literally elevating hacking to a form of warfare within the U.S. system. Now, granted, Russia and China have been doing this for years. I understand that. I understand the concept of retaliation, but can you take it too far? Yes, you can. And so much more easily with MAD, with atomic weapons. Nobody dares fire the first shot unless there is an extremely compelling reason. But we're just talking about the Internet. Half these politicians don't even know anything about how it works. Who's to say they won't fire the first shot there because they feel there will be less repercussions? And then their advisors and all the generals come running into the room. What the hell have you done? You realize what's going to happen now? Bye-bye economy. Bye-bye military capabilities. We're going to get fried. And you're responsible. I don't trust people like Obama or even Trump, by the way, to understand the ins and outs of the internet, of the social media age, with all of its social components, its technological components, and definitely its economic components to really understand the damage that can be done with cyber intrusion. I don't trust them. Not even a little bit. Some of these people, they're in their 80s. Some of these heads of state, they're, they're elderly individuals. What do they know about smartphones? Yes, there are people who are in that age bracket who know full, there's some of them, they do programming. They know more about computers certainly than I do. But do you think that Obama falls into that category? Do you think Putin falls into that category? Do you think Justin Trudeau falls into that category or the leader of China? China doesn't even have access to the outside internet except through its great canon. They have their own intranet. What do you think their politicians know about programming? Nothing. Nothing. They're a bunch of commies. So, yeah, you're setting yourselves up for a pretty damn terrible situation. Let's hope it doesn't actually come about because it's going to fry the livelihood of probably tens or hundreds of millions of people worldwide. It will probably cause millions of deaths. It'll be almost as bad as an actual war in a shorter time span. Some of these electronic systems paired now, you've got smart fridge, smart home, smart road, smart car, smart everything. You fry all those systems, there'll be traffic accidents, there'll be so much mayhem and chaos, it'll be like, the, uh, it'll be like Armageddon. 
in some places. You go to an urban area, you have to be out in the country, maybe nobody cares. You know, here it'd, it'd be safer than most. But the same, my, my goodness, what if some control system in a nuclear plant, Stuxnet style, gets attacked by Russia or China? Kablooey, well, there you go. Nice plume of radiation rising up into the air. I hope you, uh, I hope you have your iodine, I suppose. So uh, if the government can screw up something like the Patriot Act or the Affordable Care Act or any other act it's ever passed, yeah, they'll screw this up too. So on its surface, it sounds good, but it's not good. It's a terrible idea. Uh, hopefully Trump strikes it down the second he gets into office and reverses that damage. That's about all. Peace out.